I am Sulakshana Badani and um, I am turning 40 soon. I am an image consultant, trained image consultant. Currently I work with a truck and bus company and uh, I, I actually was diagnosed with cancer in the year 2015. It's been almost two years now. I'm totally alright the way I am, happy and healthy. And to talk a little bit about my journey, about how, how I got to know about the cancer. Uh, I think uh, basically cancer as such was, was this whole taboo disease. Growing up, none of us spoke about it. 2013, two days before Diwali, I, as usual, I was doing my regular self-examination. I would do it once a month, once in 15 days, as and when. And I found a small lump in my right breast. So I was alarmed and uh, I immediately went to my gynecologist and she was, uh, she was like, it's nothing. You know, you go take an ultrasound and come. So I went, did an ultrasound, came back and she said, it's nothing, I let it be. And uh, it, it just went on. I would, uh, I would start feeling the lump grow. And I, we always had this misconception that uh, if it doesn't pain, then you should be worried about it. But that I would say is a, is a misconception. Even if the lump pains, whatever it is, however small it is, the minute you find it, I think you should go and get a biopsy done straight away. That was, that was something that I missed doing in 2013. Then uh, this kept going on and uh, I was a big gym person, I was extremely skinny, I used to weigh like a steady 55 kilos for a long time and I gradually started putting on weight from the beginning of 2015 and I was worried about it, I said, uh, I was worried that you know I had diabetes because my dad was an early diabetic from age 35. So I went and got a master health check done in the beginning of May. And uh, at that point of time, my radiologist, she took, uh, she saw the lump when she was doing my uh, ultrasound and she asked me to get a fine needle biopsy done. I did that. I didn't bother to look at my reports once they came back. And my radiologist happened to call me and uh, she asked me, she said, have you looked at your reports? I said, no, I haven't. So she said, why don't you take a look at it? And I said, I've seen it and it's about my... Uh, you know, fasting sugar being a bit high. And then she said, no, I want you to look at your uh, fine needle biopsy report. So I picked it up and it said positive for malignancy. At that moment, I didn't understand. You know, I, I would never have thought. I mean, all of us uh, go through this. We never think it could happen to us. We always think it can happen to the neighbor, it can happen to here, their friends, but never to you. You're always in denial. But PET scan is one thing that literally takes more than half the day and they keep injecting this dye in you and you have to lie absolutely still in that machine which I hate. I'm extremely claustrophobic. So I was saying my prayers and <laughs> lying down there. But yeah, I went through it. Next day went back with my reports and he said that, you know, it was stage 2. And for me, the first, he said I would have to have 8 rounds of chemo. I was thinking I could escape. I said, what if I only do the surgery and don't opt for a chemo? He said, no, you don't have that option. You're under 40 and uh, you can't take that chance. So, and then he said, 30 sittings of radiation. So, I had long straight hair up to my waist. I was worried, not worried, I mean, I was totally, uh, I was upset that I was going to lose my hair. He told me I was definitely going to lose my hair, but it would all come back. And uh, my treatment was coordinated by my sister. My sister is a doctor. She lives in the U.S. So she would coordinate my treatment directly along with my doctor. And uh, I was told very specifically by the doctor, which was a sound piece of advice, which I also like to give to the others that uh, please don't read what is on the internet. Listen to your doctor. They are doctors for a reason. Otherwise, you know, you could, I think, self-medicate and do it because everything is available on the internet for us to read. But uh, there's somebody who's there who's specialized in it and I think you should listen to them. Google is the biggest enemy during your treatment. And I did not look online. So my sister also would tell me that, uh, you know, the more you look and the more you read about it, it's good to know, it's good to be informed. But when you have excess of information and many things are very told in a gory way on the internet. 
so you don't want to go through that you start subconsciously your mind starts working maybe this will happen to me maybe that will happen to me so that's not a good thing when you're undergoing your treatment my surgeon was really good she would give me these small tips dr selvi till today she's a big pillar of strength for me and for all her patients not just me but everybody around her she's a fabulous doctor my oncologist also a man of few words dr t raja but extremely supportive and uh, i would say he was he would always suggest the latest in the in the industry and you know what was the best he would uh, he he's, he's a completely up to date person what he suggested was what they are doing in the us so there's nothing to be really worried about i completely listened to him whatever piece of advice they would give right from i could not eat to uh, once i started my chemos i totally lost my whole sense of taste and i was disoriented chemos were like a really horrible time i would uh, go for the chemo and first chemo i i really didn't know what happened to me i it, i didn't react so badly but uh, the second chemo onwards was uh, was really tough the day i would have the chemo i would go in happily and all that and by the time i come out in the evening i would be half semi conscious the next two days i will not know what's going on absolutely i couldn't eat i couldn't sit i couldn't stand it, it was really bad but then uh, from the third chemo onwards i kind of began to say that okay this is how it is going to be this is my only way to get better so you need to tell yourself constantly that tomorrow is going to be a better day and everything is only temporary okay you would feel sometimes i would feel like one truck literally hit me and ran over me that bad i i couldn't get up and even use the restroom it was as bad and uh, of course my family was extremely supportive starting with my son he was uh, he was a very understanding boy my husband of course there not only to provide financial support but uh, emotionally in fact he gave up his entire contract which he had for uh, commentary just to be with me right through my treatment my parents without them i don't know what i would have done i actually moved there after after the chemo i think day 17 is the day when all your hair falls off i remember i went to wash my whatever little hair was there and uh, as i was putting shampoo like it just started to come out and i came out i came out of the shower and i presented my bald self to everyone we laughed at it i would uh, i would try to make everything like it was it was a you know funny thing i think uh, in a lighter spirit if you joke about it then everybody also immediately becomes uh, okay she is okay so let us also be okay it removes that whole atmosphere of gloom in the house every chemo is different you know you you react differently there are certain things that happen there's a i think the second chemo you start to become very violent you can't help such things because the medication does that to you and my mom would know my sister would have informed my mom that this chemo she is going to be like this i really i distinctly remember the third chemo that uh, i became like a little child i would uh, i would want to sing nursery rhymes and uh, i asked my dad to sing some lullaby to put me to sleep if, if you go through those phases my son couldn't understand he uh, he would say why is mummy talking like a baby so i then my mom had to make him understand that you know she's going through this so so that happened and uh, i refused to go for my fourth chemo i was i i remember i was spent the whole night i would come back just two days before going for my chemos because i was little bit better by then i would have these booster injections and my uh, blood count would come down really drastically and uh, i would have to be in a very Uh, sterile environment then i would have my injections and i would get better the night before the fourth chemo i sat in the bathroom on the ledge and i cried the whole night because i didn't want to go i said i don't care if i die i don't want to go for the chemo i was really upset and angry at that point of time and i had my friends talking to me they came over at that point of time in the night and they sat and they spoke to me and they said no you have to go through Yeah, so I went again, went back. Didn't know what happened for the next three days. So those four cycles were really bad. 
and I had very tight cycles. Like every two weeks, I would go. Normal chemo cycles are three weeks, but uh, I guess when you're younger, they want to give you tighter cycles. I was somebody who was very open about it. I think it's better to be open. A lot of people don't want to talk about the fact that they have cancer. I don't know why they do that, uh, but I was extremely open about it. I didn't want the sympathy of anyone. That that's one thing that uh, you know. I I wrote always. I used to write a column in the Hindu at that point of time that kept me going every week no matter what happened I would write my column and I guess what cancer does to you is it changes your whole perspective of life so it gives you a whole new perspective in life it teaches you a lot of values it makes you enjoy every day and live life to the fullest you don't have time for any more drama or any more nonsense you do what you want to do and uh, I think that's that's a real big learning for me, I took it as a learning. Maybe uh, it happened to me so that uh, I could learn from it. I could learn how to value my life more. And also to show others around me that this is something that you can overcome and overcome in this way. Today, I've uh, my hair has grown back and of course I put on weight which is okay. I'm working on that. But uh, you, have to, you have to have this fighting spirit. Whatever happens, there should never be a a day or a moment that you should give up if you are strong from within you have to have that inner strength nothing can touch you and that's not just me there are so many women who've undergone worse than me who've come out fighting and they are doing absolutely fine and fabulous always be on the lookout be aware of what's happening with your body within your body and always respect your body treat it well exercise eat healthy don't drink, don't smoke and uh, live a happy and healthy life is what I would like to say.